I'd like to welcome everyone back to the SE Village. We can continue on with our speeches. Uh, we have members of the ILF Foundation here. Uh, Chris Hadnegi, a good friend, but also a, a board member of the ILF, professional social engineer. We also have AJ Cook. Uh, you know, may know her as uh, JJ from Criminal Minds. And we also have Neil Fallon, who's the lead singer of Clutch. So we look forward to seeing all those. And just to let everyone know, all the board members of ILF are here, except for Casey. So they're, they're all uh, in the audience. So looking forward to meeting them afterwards as well. So let's give our attention to Chris, AJ, and Neil. Welcome back to the village, guys and gals. Nice to have you all here. So uh, how many were here last year? Not here, obviously, but in the SE Village last year when we announced the ILF? Okay, quite a few. So for those of you that weren't, because there was more hands down than there were up, let's just recap what happened last year. So DEF CON 25, I announced that we're starting a foundation um, that was going to use white hat hackers. So people from this community, those who have special skills in OSINT, right? And I think this is important to differentiate because people came up and asked, so open source intelligence gathering, not actually technical network hacking. Um, that was the goal, right? Because we're not, we're not going on to servers and hacking them to get their databases. Uh, we're finding people online that are profiting from child pornography or producing it or trafficking children or exploiting children. And we're uncovering who they are on, online. We're uncovering um, who they are in real life. And then we're handing all that information over to law enforcement. As much as I would like the baseball bat justice, it just doesn't work, right? So we need to get them over to law enforcement. After I announced what happened at DEF CON, uh, you can see some of the stats on the slide. Over 300 people volunteered. We're up to 352. It's just ridiculous. We have over 10, actually I need to update that. Just in the last couple of weeks, we have over 12 reported cases and 10 files have been produced. Now what does that mean? A file is an actually identified perpetrator someone who is actually exploiting children. So we have 10 of those people identified over to law enforcement and we have a number of those turned into active cases with federal law enforcement. So that makes me super happy after just one year to stand here and tell you all the things that we've accomplished in, in one year. Um, some really other proud moments is, you know, and this happened that you guys knew this last year for those of you that were here, but um, Neil was like my sounding board, which is an odd thing to say out loud in my, in my head or even out loud at all. Going to Neil and saying, hey, I got this crazy idea. You want to be with me and start a foundation that hunts down child predators? And he's like, hey, you know, I need some time to think about this. And then he goes and he talks to his wife and they came back and said, you know, that they wanted to be a part of it. That was a huge deal for me. Not being in the industry, it was kind of nice to have a sounding board someone to say this is a good or a terrible idea or maybe we should do something about this. Um, Neil has a bunch of friends that ha ended up down the line um, getting us hooked up with AJ who then jumped right on board and we'll let her talk about uh, how she made that decision along with Neil too. Then something else huge happened. Uh, anyone know Humble Bundle? Humble, yeah, right? So amazing organization. If you don't know who they are, basically what they do is they put together bundles of of PDF books. So for us, and, and sometimes, and also I learned this from my son, games. I didn't know they did games. I just knew they did books. I don't play games, right? So I didn't know they also did gaming, which I guess is the much bigger side of Humble Bundle than the book side, which I'm learning also. I'm slow. I'm sorry. So um, they came to us as, as uh, the Innocent Lives because of my fourth book was coming out, and my publisher said, hey, do you think that you would want to be part of the Humble Bundle. I'm like, yes, that would be awesome. I'm thinking, you know, maybe we'll get a few thousand dollars and that would be really cool, catapult us into not having to uh, front load it all ourselves and pay for everything ourselves. And we made $185,000 in donations in two months. That's crazy. That's crazy. So I get asked this question often. You know, why? Why do, that, why do we have to do this? Why is this even, even needed? So to, to, to help explain this, I want you to play a game with me, okay? How old is she? Under 10, 7, someone said 11, I heard 12. Okay, well this is a famous actress, Carolyn Linney from 1952, she's 12 years old, right? And when I saw that picture, 
I would have guessed the same as you. How old is she? 16, 17, 14 I heard, I heard 11 over here. She's also 12, Veronica Cartwright from 1962. How old is she? Someone is seeing a pattern. You, you my dear, are very smart. You always catch things very quick. She is 12. This is the actress Jodie Foster from 1974. Now I'm not going to trick you, try to trick you again. But this is a 1987 Drew Barrymore, also 12 years old. This is the Olsen twins in the 90s, 12 years old. And this is a modern day 12 year old. What has changed over the last 50 years? This is a famous, a famous because of social media. This is not victim blaming, but we need to understand what's happening in society. See, the over-sexualization of children makes this kind of material easy for people to get. Both boys and girls are over-sexualized in media, on TV, in news, in movies, in music, to the point that it's hard to tell their age, isn't it? Now, it wasn't hard when we were back in the 50s and 60s, you guys were all guessing the, the appropriate ages by looking at the pictures. But now we get into this age, and can you, can you really say you honestly can see that she's 12 years old? I can't, right? So that's part of the problem. Here's the other part of the problem. There are communities. I'm going to show you some things, and I really want to just up front say um, there may be some trigger warnings for people in here. I'm not going to show you anything explicit. I promise you that. But I need you to understand why this fight has to occur. This is a community online that's called the Pedo Support Community. Fortunately, you cannot read all of those texts that are up there um, very clearly, I hope. But this community has 165,946 posts in it. Posts that include how to marry a pedophile wife, how to groom your first child, how to kidnap and abduct children. These are forums where these people talk about these very topics to educate each other, how to avoid law enforcement, how to encrypt your hard drives, and believe it or not, their information is really good. I mean, like from a security perspective, it's solid information on how to do these things. Here's another one. Just from looking at the headings, they deal with toddlers, teens, webcams, hardcore, softcore, 20,442 20, posts with 371,000 members on this forum. So this is a huge problem, and one that's not going to go away overnight. Anyone know Nick Mick? You hear the, the organization Nick Mick? Some of you raise your hand. So it stands for the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, uh, an excellent organization here in the U.S. that actually works internationally. Uh, they, they do some pretty phenomenal work. Um, sadly, it's very difficult work for them, but they have to catalog all child pornography and child exploitation and child abuse material, and then they assign it a hash, and that hash gets divvied out to law enforcement so they can go and try to see where those images come from, and then they try to make arrests with that information. The poor people at NCMEC have to deal with 480,000 plus child abuse images per week, per week. Try to understand that. These are new images, not reproduced images. This is 480,000 plus new images of child abuse material per week. That's 25 million images of children being abused per year. It's just unbelievable to think that that exists. 78% of those images are children 12 and under. 78%. I can't do the math that quick in my head, nor do I want to, because it's just disgusting. 63% are children eight or under. And 80% are girls, 19% are boys. So we can see the, the, just the depravity in these statistics. More than 30% of searchers on P2P networks are involving child pornography. So um, P2P networks, they did a, a, a um, research on this and more than 30% of all searches on those networks are dealing with child abuse material. That's how they're spreading it so, so much, an end with the dark web. The average child abuser, here's some stats. 97% male, 
97% USA citizens. That is disturbing. Do you know that over 60% of the world's ch child pornography is produced here in this country? Yeah, we always assume that it's done in some other country, maybe a third world country, maybe something to do with money, but it's produced by US citizens in this country. 97, 68% of it. 97% are US, 82% white, 79% have no prior convictions. I was talking to someone this weekend <clears throat> about this very statistic. As you know, when you have violent criminals, you can often tell, right? Someone that they have a lot of violence inside of them, the way they approach you, it's very aggressive. You can kind of see it in their eyes. They're angry all the time. Uh, if you have someone who abuses women uh, or treats women bad, usually you can see the way that they deal with women. You can see that. But what is the indicator for a pedophile? Does anyone know? There are none. That's the thing. See, a person who abuses children looks like you and me because there's no big indicator or flashing light that says that someone is into children. And now there's a movement where they're trying to make pedophilia part of the LGBT community. So, yeah, saying that it is a preference to be sexually attracted to children. Yep, yep, you'll be seeing a lot of that coming up soon. So it's a fight, right? It's, a, it's, a, it's an issue that has to be dealt with. And sadly, um, law enforcement, and this is not a slight on them, right? This is not a slight. I'm not saying this as an insult to them. Law enforcement does not have the technical skills in-house to always deal with this or enough manpower. So that's why we started this. So our mission is to unmask people who anonymously prey on children and then help law enforcement deal with them appropriately. So I have a couple of things I can tell you before I introduce the other, the other board members. Yeah, this, I already mentioned this, but this happened. This was just a mind blowing to me. And you know, Humble Bundle, they, they're a charitable organization, but they have to make money for the books they, they sell. And when we did it, when we had that, we had Neil and AJ and, um, and both of their friends uh, are with Aisha Tyler, and she tweeted the Humble Bundle, and it kind of blew up. So everybody was going to buy the books, which was great for them, for Humble Bundle, and it was great for us. So now they're like, hey, would you care if we include you a couple times a year on this? And I'm like, no. <laughs> That's a silly question. So of course. So this looks like a really good model for us in being able to deal with um, any kind of expenses. So let me give you an example of things that can occur. Um, I have so many that I want to share with you, but I just want to you know, kind of maybe give you one or two. So we, uh, we have this, this father who found out that his daughter was being groomed, 11-year-old daughter being groomed by someone on Instagram. Right, so we're always, when I hear that, I always think Snapchat, because Snapchat's the devil, right? But it's Instagram now. So DMing through Instagram as a 14-year-old girl, that's what this guy was doing. And he got her to take non-pornographic but illicit pictures of her as an 11-year-old. And then um, started to plant seeds about meeting, meeting up so they can kind of go away on a little trip together. This 14-year-old was supposedly very wealthy, had a lot of money, and was going to take her away for a trip. And the dad went, found out, because this, amazing, this is just wonderful, that this part of the story, the daughter started feeling weird about the conversations and told her dad. And her dad went and looked at the account and went, oh, reached out to the police. Police said, we can't do anything. Nothing has occurred. So the father, angry, went online, started looking at things and found the ILF, emailed the ILF and said, I need help. We took over the account and we started interacting with that person and getting him to um, agree to meet, getting him to offer up more details about himself, um, making a time and location. And then we called federal law enforcement and said, hey, we have this guy who wants to go meet an 11-year-old. And then they went to the house, took over the phone, and took over the account. And that is now an active case. Two days later, because that father was talking about it, another mother in the community said, wait, the same thing's happening to my daughter from the same user. So we were able to do the same thing and help build the case with federal law enforcement. So that's an active case that is now occurring as we speak on these people who are tra trafficking children. The way it works is they go, they pick them up, and then they traffic them overseas. So this is now something that's going to be not all of trafficking, but this particular person is going to be stopped because of the work that our group did. Really, really wonderful um, feeling for that to occur. Yeah, thank you.
So some of the other details that, that come up that people ask about is like, how can you get involved? And I've had so many people come up and hand me a card and say, can I help? I, 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 didn't, I need to tell you how, how you can help right now. Um, and then we're going to get Neil and AJ up here to talk about their journey into the ILF. So if you give me a card, I'm going to guarantee you I'm probably going to forget to email you about this, and I'm sorry, and it's not because I don't care. We have 352 volunteers. The way that you volunteers need to be vetted, and this is a background check, it's a credit check, and it's a federal check. And you, you know, you can kind of, I don't need to just lay it out, you know the material that we're getting into, right? So this is, this is not a light matter, and it's not for everybody. Um, and that's acceptable. If it, no, uh, helping other people should not harm your family. So if you, can't, if you can help in that way, then there's other ways you can help. You can promote the ILF. You can tell people that if they know of things online that they feel are inappropriate use of children or exploitation of children, to report it to us, to also report it to NICMIC. You can donate and help uh, continue the cause so we can grow the organization. Right now, what we've built is we've built some proprietary technology that has helped save our researchers from having to deal with a serious psychological harm. So we have a, a VDI, that's a virtual desktop infrastructure system that blurs all images that, that come up on the screen. So our researchers don't have to see the garbage that comes up on the screen. Now sadly, that's not enough because they have to read the material. And that's why the first thing we did with all, with all the money that was donated was we hired a psychologist. So we have a mental health program in our organization and it's mandated to meet with the mental health professional after doing research and work uh, because mental health is probably the most important thing you can do for people that are doing this. Um, and that came directly from NICMIC in a conversation with them. So if you, want to, if you want to help, you can go to innocentlivesfoundation.org. And on that website, there's multiple different ways that you can volunteer. All I ask is for your patience. Right now, as you can imagine, last year when I announced this, I kind of thought, um, one of two things are going to happen. People are look at me like I'm nuts, and, and then they're going like, to kick me out of the community. Or it's going to be like, everyone's going to be like, wow, that's great, but we don't want to think about this. Because that's kind of what happens in your head, right? You really want to think about this even occurring. It's kind of hard to imagine that there's 300,000 people on a forum that specializes in the molestation of toddlers. Like, that's hard to, to picture, right? We don't want to deal with that. Um, but, the, but the reverse of all of that occurred. What occurred is the community embraced it, and we have 350 people sitting in a database saying, use me. And I have 14 people right now that we started the organization with, and we're trying to work out our SOPs, right? Because that's important, right? We, we kind of jumped into it head first, and we, we, we kicked butt. We did so much great work. And then we stopped, and we went, okay, we want to grow. Well, how do we do it without some, some good operating procedures? So that's our next step. We're working on that as a team. We're working on, on standardizing um, the way that we're going to do our OSINT. And these things, I, I, I'm sorry, but these things will not be published. No, those things will not be public. I will not speak about the SOPs publicly or our procedures publicly, even if you ask. That will be proprietary to any organization. You want to know something interesting? Um, you remember the subway guy, Jared? Jared he got arrested for, for raping small children. You remember that? Well, you know how they found him? It was a dog that was trained to sniff the silicon in USB keys. And when they went into his home, they found behind the walls he had dozens of USB keys that were laden with child pornography. Now, that news came out, and you know what came on that, that pedophilia form? On how to use hard drives, encrypted hard drives, so they weren't using USB keys anymore to get past the silicon sniffing dogs. So when you publicize your SOPs, or you publicize the method that you catch these people, they're watching the same way we are. And then they adapt, they learn, and then they make it harder. And the last thing we want to do is become an educational force for people who are doing the worst evils on the planet. So, um, you know, if you ask questions about that and I say no, I can't share it, don't take it personally. Okay, it's not about, it's not about trust. It is just about protecting the innocent. And that's really what our organization is all about. And now I'd like to invite 
Neil Fallon up to the stage, if you can everyone give him a huge round of applause. And if you would also join me in welcoming A.J. Cook onto the stage. So, you know, I want to do Q&A with you guys here. You know what, take this, because this is longer. And I'll use the short one. There we go. I can just stay right here. Um, I want to do Q&A with the audience and them, but you know, I think what's important maybe is to first let them tell the journey. Like how, what made you become part of the ILF? Uh, well, I'll, I'll, first I'll say it's, it's hard to talk about. It's one of the things I've learned um, since that first phone call was, or it's still, I'm still in the process of learning how to talk about this because it's incredibly emotional and it's awkward to talk about it in clinical terms, but you kind of have to divorce yourself from that horror in order to do the work. Um, but I remember very distinctly when Chris called me, uh, I was sitting in my Jeep it was one of those phone calls you get and you, you knew you, this was a big decision and I digested it for a couple days and I spoke to my wife and I, I, I told her about this and she said to me, now that you know, how can you not help? And sometimes I think we try to over justify or, or explain motivations for doing good. Like, what, what's your story about doing good? But I honestly think doing good for the sake of doing good is the only justification you need. You don't need to explain it. So I'm, I'm, I'm not a hacker, uh, and I didn't really know anything about this topic except for the evening news, like most of us. And once Chris spoke to me and I saw those stories on the evening news, I knew that that may have been the end of that story, but that was the bookend to someone's horror that went on for years. And it's happening right now for millions of children. So I, have, so I found myself in a position and an opportunity to do something and if it just means helping one kid, then it, that's worth it. That's, that's the only justification I need. And I, I wish I had a more eloquent explanation to give you. But when I, you know, look at my kid, and I, I think about other parents who may be going through this or can't see their kid, it, it just breaks my heart. It really, really breaks my heart. And I think we may feel powerless to stop it, but all I did was talk to people. Chris talked to me, and I said to myself, well, I, well what do I do? I, I don't know how to get on a keyboard and do this stuff, and I really didn't want to, frankly. And I, I thought, well, I know some people in the music industry and in the entertainment industry, and it was a hard subject to broach, but I sent an email to Aisha Tyler, and we went back and forth. And Aisha is friends with AJ, and here she is. And that's no different than any of you talking to a friend about this. You know, the, the amount of Twitter followers or Instagram profile, that, that's all well and good. But look how many people are in the room right now and how many hundreds of friends each and every one of you have, and then they have, it's an exponential force. So that's why I joined it, and you know, I'm grateful for the opportunity to do some good somehow. You know, my story is actually pretty similar as far as, um, you know, I, I heard about it through Aisha and uh, you and I got to have a, a conversation and uh, it w there was a moment where I just thought, damn it, 
you know? Because it's such a difficult subject and it's such a, a heartbreaking situation. It's not dinner conversation. It's not, it's a hard subject to broach as he, as Neil was talking about. So I knew, I just knew I couldn't walk away. Trust me, I wanted to. I really wanted to, but as a mom, you know, I, I could not, could not walk away. And it's something that, uh, you know, I'm still trying to figure out how to be useful. <laughs> and uh, I am not a hacker. I, uh, this is my first time at DEF CON. You people are all amazing to me. This is foreign for me. Um, I wish I had all of your beautiful brains. Holy smokes, because I don't think that way. But that's good, because we have this, this man and, and a whole bunch of other people doing that. Um, I'm just trying to be useful in, uh, in a way of getting the message out there. I had no idea this existed. It changed my life and my, uh, my, uh, <laughs> my thoughts and feelings toward this subject because it's, it, you tend to push it away. It starts to creep in and someone maybe brings up something or you see like a little clip on, on the news and we, we push it away really quick because it's, it's dark. <laughs> it's dark and it's, uh, it's horrifying to think that these things still happen and um, they seem to be happening more and more. And they will continue with, uh, you know, like you saw, that 12-year-old. Mm, okay, she's 12? <laughs> uh, uh, so I just, I couldn't walk away. And uh, I am so honored to, to be working with this gentleman over here. And uh, he's, the work he's been able to put into this so far in just a year, it blows my mind and I really look forward with hopefully the help of some of you even with just telling your friends about it and uh, you know the message will grow and grow and uh, hopefully we'll start to see some change and again if it's just one child you are the one that told me this because I got really caught up in the, the whole this is bigger than me like how how do we make a difference there's just all of these statistics were so alarming to me and uh, I just felt like, how do, where do we even begin? And Neil so eloquently put it in the way of just one person. You save one child, and we've done it. We've done it. So, you know, it's, I know it's a hard ask. <laughs> it's a hard ask, and it's not for everybody. But uh, you could really help us out by just kind of, you know, sharing that message and uh, just letting people know that this even exists. So. Thanks for listening. We have plenty of time so we can have a discussion about if anyone has questions about the organization or Neil or AJ or anything else. Yes. So the question was, how are we vetting our volunteers since pedophilia is such a, a big deal, right? And, and I admit strongly, oh, there you are, Tim. I was looking for you. I was looking all over the place for you. Um, and there's no strong indicators, right? So how do we vet? Uh, well, this is not a short fire way to, to, to do it, but I can tell you our process, and it comes directly from, from Nick Mick. Um, I learned a lot from them because this is one of my biggest worries. You start hiring people and on to, to work and, and you get a bad actor to ruin your whole organization. So uh, we, do, we do a full background check on each person and you have to submit to it. There's no anonymity in this. There is to the world. If you do not want the world to know you volunteer with ILF, then we will not mention your name, right? You will not be on the website. We will not talk about you. But there is no anonymity when it comes to law enforcement. If a law enforcement agent wants to know who you are, and they do want to know who you are if you're working with us, then everything we have on you will go to them, and it does. Secondly, any work that you do that is not on our VDI, we will turn you in. If you submit something, you went to a CP forum or something, and you did that not on our VDI, then I have no problem turning you in. Right? No, none at all. It's, it's illegal. So you can't do it. The VDI 
is, lo is logged and monitored and you have absolutely no rights access to change anything. You can just do your job and that is it. So um, people come in full aware and knowing that everything you do is being monitored by Big Brother and that we will have no issue because that's our mission statement is turning people in that, that want to hurt children. And I don't care if that's you or if that's me or if that's anyone, they're gonna get turned in because we don't, we're not gonna deal with that, right? That's part of the issue. Um, so is that 100%? It's gonna be bad actors that happens. Nick, Nick told me it happens to them all the time. People will get hired. So the third step in that process is our, is our psychologist, is our mental health program, is that you're mandated to meet with her for a minimum of 30 minutes after every time you do a case. And that, again, that's not 100%, but her job is that if she feels anyone starts becoming a threat to themselves or to children, then she will turn you in. And there is no, there is just no option, there is no plan B for that. So it's, I know it's not a 100% answer, I wish there was, but that, that's as close as we can get to trying to keep it secure while we, while we try to make a change in this. Yeah, I saw a hand over here. So, yeah, yeah, go ahead, sir. I saw your hand first. So I want to make sure I understand your question. You're asking if, if the way that we're doing OSINT will make the bad guys better? Okay, yeah, that, so that's a, great, that's a great question. So he's asking that if we, like, so if we're really good at our OSINT and we skim off the top scum, right, that aren't good, and then what's left are these really good guys who know how to hide their stuff. So that is a risk, okay, but I'm okay with skimming off the scum right now because let's say the scum is 90% of them. Um, I'm okay with that for this moment. Let's get rid of them. And then we can figure out how we fight that deeper fight, right? But for right now, if we can... If we can skim out the majority of them, I'll take it. Every little win, you know, every little win. We got two, or, two arrests under our belt as an organization. I want 2,000, but I'll take two, because that's two people who aren't molesting children anymore because they're sitting in prison. I'll take it. And that's not a great answer, but I'll do it, you know? Yeah. Uh, the question was, are any of the cases that I've seen repeat offenders? Um, I don't know, to be honest, because we don't, we don't have access to the law enforcement records. Public record for those. Um, I will say that I just, the answer, honest answer is I don't know if they are. I haven't, I, I don't have that knowledge in my head. Yes. Oh, that's a great question. So he, uh, he asked how our, how our mental health program works co-located. So believe it or not, um, mental health programs can be done through HIPAA compliant systems online if, if both parties agree. So our mental health program is done through video. Uh, it cannot be done on phone, it's done through video and through a HIPAA compliant uh, platform. And that's the way we do it now, we can get past that. Yes, sir. How do we deal with contraband? Correct. Yep. Uh, so we don't download anything. We don't capture any images. Cash is shut off. We don't collect it. Don't need to see it. See, on these forums, the ones that I showed you, these are just a couple. These guys and gals are on there talking about what they did to these kids. The images don't need to be seen to understand how horrible the things are that they've done. It doesn't, nope. And then what we do is we send those links directly to our federal law enforcement contacts and then they have the right to go download those images. And that's good enough for me. It's a good question, thank you for that. Yes, ma'am. Do you have only one psychologist for For now, yes. Uh, she, she, has, um, she has many contacts that have agreed to join the force when needed. But right now we only have active, how many, nine? Eight, nine researchers, I can't remember the number. Eight or nine researchers and then all the others support other parts of the organization. So the, the people who are doing like some of the blog writing and website development and things like that, they don't need to see the, the shrink, right? It's just people doing the research. When we grow that, we'll need, she will definitely need help. 
because she has an active practice um, that she that she takes care of and she blocks out time for us and then when that time gets filled she will tell me and then we'll add another person to the to the roster yeah yes sir Uh, so the question was, do we have any worries about international retaliation? Uh, yes, of course, right? But here's the deal. Um, there is no federal law enforcement agent that has an ILF boot when they kick the door in. They're not saying, we're here because of ILF. We're not part of the arresting team. I'm not in court. I'm not testifying. So the knowledge that any organization would have that we're involved is minimal, almost impossible. We do that on purpose, and that is up to us, by the way, guys and gals, because what we need to do is be able to produce a file that can walk a law enforcement agent from A to Z without needing us. So if we do our job right, then we can be invisible, and that's what we want. Yeah, yes, ma'am? Yes, yeah, uh, sadly that contact is gonna be me, so I'll need to give you a card after, okay? And I mean sadly just because I'm, I'm terrible, but I will I answer these. I will give you an ILF card. Those. Thank you very much, I think that's fair. And I'm sorry to be that way, that's really terrible of a way to be, but I'm, I appreciate that. And then we just issued, a, we had a three-part blog on how to notice the signs of exploited children with a really nice PDF chart that you can download that talks about the signs for exploited children and children that are being groomed and that children that are at risk for, um, for, prost for prostitution. So uh, we c I can share that with you. Yes. All the way down there. Well, these two people are definitely helping. So, if you, either of you want to, <laughs> uh, I, I heard. Oh, sorry, I was about. I'm a rock and roll musician. My hearing is terrible. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, he's been listening to like three million said. decibel music for his whole life. <laughs> it was about. Do we have any concepts or ideas for future fundraising? We're definitely uh, brainstorming and working on that. Uh, I would say keep your eyes on the ILF website and. Uh, uh, I've been brainstorming a couple things, as you have as well. So yeah, it's um, not only the it was the material and you know the hacking, for lack of a better word, new to us. So it's fundraising, <laughs> frankly. For all three of us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's a, um, it's much more complicated than I ever would have thought. Yeah. Um, so if you have any suggestions, please let us know. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah. We can use. Oh, see, look at my team. You see, see these two beautiful oh, yeah, women back there. There. So we, so we are a legit 501c3, right? So I, what's amazing to me, I didn't share this with you before, but I did this last year. We got our approval back from the IRS in under two months. My CPA said that never happens. Like usually it takes like a year. I don't know how that happened, but in two months we got our our 501c3 back. So we do take donations on the website, which have been very. Very, um, a very big port of, part of our, our fundraising. And we've been um, using these stickers, and I know it seems like a weird thing to do, but just kind of people have been coming back all weekend and donating to the ILF and then getting uh, a sticker for that. Oh, yes, and thank you. Jameson reminded me because he works for a corporation that does the very thing he just said. Like, Jameson's organization has a matching program. And since we're a legit 501c3, you can find us in the giving databases. So if your organization has a matching program, you can add it to your, your charitable donations. And if you donate to us, your company will match that. So thank you, both ladies in the back and Jameson, for, 
for that and, and donations are, are definitely accepted. Oh, so, uh, and one other thing, I, I am, I don't know if anyone likes Criminal Minds here, but I am working on a, on a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I am working on putting together a visit to the set, so that's going to be a big one coming up, so let's, let's keep our eyes peeled for that, <laughs> but like he said, I, never in a million years would I have thought, like, fundraising would be so complicated but we're we're slowly we're, we're getting it together so I'll, I'll donate if i can go <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we'll be able to do a couple of them yeah. so. <laughs> yes sir uh, so you're saying that this mainly deals with what you can owe set to do this now are there still places like to be able to get involved if you do have extensive knowledge in, in that you know and i have a lot of things in networks and the, so there are, yes, but the, the main thing that we have to do is that we have to be strict about our, our, our SOPs, right? If we hand something in that even looks like we stepped over the line, I'll give you an interesting example that came to me from our law enforcement friends. Do you know that over 80% of the people that Chris Hansen supposedly helped to get arrested walked? They, they all walked. They don't tell you that part. So that the Catch a Predator show was just bunk because they, they walked. Because what happened after that show is their, their, their dirtbag lawyers came in the court and said, well, you have no proof that I was a pedophile. This girl came on to me online. And I just I didn't know that this was going to be a setup. I just went to go give her beer and drugs, you know. Like, and somehow the judge goes, well, you're right. There was no proof that a crime was going to be committed. So let him go. So we cannot do anything that will assist the bad guys in being able to continue to do their disgusting things. So we, my, my team and I are very strict about a file won't even get handed in if it's not complete. Right? It won't even get handed in. So we, we can't step over that line because that puts the whole organization at risk. So is there a place? Yes, but we probably have to get a little further along before we get approvals to do certain things. Okay? I know so many hands. Ma'am, I saw you before. Go ahead, yes. Yep, you, yep. I can, I can barely hear you. There we go, that'll make it easier. Oh, you're, you're, and you're awesome. Mm -hmm. So I have two, oh, I have two questions and feel free to answer whichever one or both. Um, the first one is when you do whatever your research is, do you focus on finding one or have you been trying to find the rain? Um, the second question is, have you um, considered uh, participating in Give Big events? Explain this, I don't know what that second one was. So, um, does anybody know Give Big? Because it is every year in one month, a uh, one week of I forgot which month it is, and is like a big nationwide, or oh, maybe it was just, like, yeah. yeah, but there's a whole week thing, and then like, usually there's some, somebody else that is also like sponsoring it, or like trying to sponsor match, so that if people's company aren't matching, there is a match, and if people's company are matching, then maybe a triple match and all that. Wow. So the gift big thing is that. So I guess you don't participate in that because <laughs> <laughs> Like, Thanks for the idea, though. <laughs> so, yeah, so like we said, we stink at fundraising. <laughs> We're really bad at this part. You know? So if we haven't heard of that. There's probably a million things that you guys all have ideas, which we will gladly take when we get booted off stage. We'll go outside <laughs> and we'll take all your ideas. But for the first um, question, um, we, so it starts off because these forums generally are not rings of people. It is a person who has, uh, and there's no way to say this without just kind of really being disturbing. There is pictures and videos of them molesting their own children generally, or their stepchildren, or their nieces and nephews, and they trade these like baseball cards for free. So it's not a ring, it's these, it's these people who are online, these individuals that are doing these things. So a lot of our research has started off with individuals, and, um, and the people who own the websites that facilitate them. So that, that's, that's where we start. Yes, sir. Because the question was, can we become active on the forums? Here's the issue with that. 
then we become more and more like the Chris, Han Chris Hansen thing. As soon as we interact with one of these guys, then if something they do something bad, they can say, I wouldn't have done it if this guy didn't talk to me about 13-year-old girls. I would have never done this thing. And now he gets off, and he's free, and now he can go tell all his disgusting buddies about the, the way to, to make themselves more secure. So we don't, we don't talk to them. We don't interact with them. We don't offer them anything. We don't communicate with them. We are lurkers, and that's it. Right? Sir. Or ma'am, sorry. Um, vendors. Yeah, I don't think any of us have done that. Neil, Neil so far is probably the only one who's done um, any level of actually talking to big names in his industry about spreading the message. Uh, and, and now we're hearing like AJ stepping that game up. I kind of stink. I talk to my friends and I say, hey, you work for a big company. You have any ideas? And he goes, yeah, sure, I got a great idea. I I'm, we really need help in that. We really stink in that. Um, to talk with me after and get a business card and let's see how we make that work. Because I would, I, would I would love to know more. We are open to all these ideas. We just don't know how to do it. Like I said, this was like a crazy thing that came about. If uh, There's a million hands, but we'll take them out. Let me just tell you this quick. came about because we did a little work with an organization and uncovered a guy who was flying to the Philippines and he was molesting children and videotaping it on his work-related devices because he didn't want his wife to find out because they had two kids who he was molesting. And he was selling these things to other perverts online. And in a routine security awareness pen test, we found this guy. And he's in prison right now. And that feels great, but that was how, that's how all of this started, was because it was, whoa, I'm just a greasy little hacker that sits in the basement until one in the morning with a light bulb in my hoodie. I didn't know that you can actually do good things in your life. And I don't know anything about fundraising or... Vendor stuff, I just know how to hack things, that's it. And if I could just jump in, you know, real quick to, to say that it, uh, it's okay for us as an organization to ask for help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because there's only so many of us and there's going to be angles that we would never conceive of. So all the questions, whether it be mental health was over there and fundraising was over there in your question now, that's what we need to hear. Donations are vital, but so are ideas. And the more heads we put together, the stronger it becomes. And um, that's one of the reasons we're on stage right now. Something you know, Neil uh, humbly probably won't admit is he already got us a meeting with a representative, and Tim is working on a meeting with the senator to discuss those very things. The hard part is that's probably the long game. Changing laws and policies is not easy. It's also not something that's going to happen overnight, and it's also not something that's going to fix the problem. So there's a law in most states that you can't carry lockpicks. How many people here carry lockpicks? Right? What does the law stop? It, st it doesn't stop criminals. It doesn't stop people who do it for a living. It stops law-abiding citizens. So you make a law. Child pornography is illegal in almost every country around the globe. It's not stopping it. Go ahead, Maya. <laughs> Uh, the question was if we can spread them, like once we find one, can we then go to other forms and save other children? Uh, generally not, because the dark web, as all of us, as many of you probably know, is not cacheable or searchable like the open web. So you find their usernames, and it's not really, you can't just go onto another dark web forum and find them. 
So it's not, it's not easy to do, sadly. And sadly, finding the children is much more difficult than finding the people who are abusing them. I think we have time for maybe one more question. And then here's what we'll do after we're done, the three of us and any of the ILF volunteers that don't mind being identified, if you are, want to be, come outside and if you have questions, we will talk out there. Is that fair? Because there's a lot of hands. I know we can't get to them because I don't want to take away from the next speakers who have some great content. So if you want to continue this conversation, the three of us will go out into the hallway and you can come out there and talk with us. Is that good? And thank you all for your support for coming. Thank you, AJ. Thank you, guys. Thank you.